wearing short pants and was not wearing short pants when they told it to you. So See, now, there. that makes the compliment oh so much better. And best off, uh, I got uh, a uh, uh, a, con a uh, cable for my controller. So now I can play with my wire with my expensive wireless Xbox controller uh, wired up to my uh, uh, to my computer, but not have to worry about the batteries running out. And uh, Geralt doing like uh, his own little rave dance party. So I'm gonna have to mute the stream because I'm getting echoes. <laughs> but you can hear uh, you can hear everything else though, right? Yes. Technical issue solved. It is, of course, important to remember that uh, uh, I don't know what the hell I'm doing with this. So, like, it's a it's a learning experience all around. Yeah. Uh, so I have a, a controller for my computer. Um, it's an Xbox style controller, but it's mm -hmm. actually a USB uh, cable. Um, I, I picked that up when I was playing Dark Souls on the computer. Yeah, that's what a. Uh... I did. I did a, a fair amount of research into like you know what's a controller that uh, that doesn't absolutely suck. Um, there's a. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, left after getting absolutely hammered by an arachnomorph. Yeah. So that's I'm gonna go away. <laughs> the the only way to really handle them is dodging. But I'm good at, really good at dodging. Okay. Also, whenever you encounter enemies that have skulls on them, you just go for it. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, because uh, for lack of a better term, uh, and and I, I the sad thing is, uh, she would be, uh, you'd be very had. She'd be very sad to uh, hear me phrase it this way. Uh, Mama Fuller didn't raise no bitch. <laughs> so, um, what are your uh, skills right now that you have on your character? I think it's mostly like uh, uh, you know, like like punching people. I've, I upped my uh, my oil uh, effectiveness. Hey. Finished getting my window set up there. All right. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at that. Uh, tell me, did you do me a solid and uh, pop something in chat? That make hey, what up, Phil? Hey, Phil, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear Tom? horrible delay that chat has yeah i don't know if they're like if they're like filtering it to make sure that uh nobody in chat is playing uh <laughs> uh i don't know if they're like filtering it to make sure that you know there's not a uh, covid mr misinformation or anything like that but all right um you are coming through so if you go to the like list of uh, what your skills and stuff are and go to the one that's for your various signs. Um, so the sign Igni, the one that like uh, makes fire, mm -hmm. um, there's a uh, a skill for that one that's very useful that makes it to where if you light a enemy on fire, you reduce their armor effectiveness by, I think, 50%. Ooh. Like, that one's super useful. Melt armor. So, uh, we're gonna go on ahead and put a point in that. And then activate it. Uh, right there, thank you. And effect scales with sign intensity up to a maximum. What's the, uh... 
Incineration, exploding shield. Uh, we're going to want that one too. But I don't have... Like, they give you all of these things that you can buy. And then... Uh, don't give you the, the ability to... Uh, I... So so my my Geralt is uh like almost entirely uh combat and uh general skills. Um because the, the combat ones are really good. Uh and the general one I wanna say there's one for like increasing the amount of time you can hold your breath and like increasing the speed at which you uh regain stamina. Now, it, um, it may have just been... You see the levitating crows? Uh, it may have just been the fact that, uh, uh, that the last time that I was trying to swim, my Xbox controller was, uh, was telling me no. Uh, or it may be the... Uh, it may be the, uh, the fact that it was, like, going between the control and the keyboard. Uh, but I found swimming... Hellish, and I want to do as little. As... No, it, it's it's pretty garbage Good all around. But stuff. by the time you get to uh, Skellige, there's so much stuff that's underwater. You're definitely going to want to pick Good up that thing that makes stuff. it to where you uh, you breathe faster, and then you're also going to want the the skill from um, the combat stats that lets you fire two crossbow bolts before you have to reload. Good but I think I have found stuff. a bug in that I'm telling this guy that I wouldn't mind to look at his stock. And it's not bringing me to a shop. That's yeah. It's uh. So I think it just comes off as uh. As Carol's trying to hook up with this dude. Yeah, apparently, he doesn't have anything to sell me. Carol well. wouldn't mind to look at his stock. Maybe back out and try it again. I don't have any money anyway. The game, uh, the game imitates real life, and, uh, uh, what the I heck? ain't That's got, real weird. I ain't got no money. Okay, so now it's telling me that, uh, uh, that that way lies death on my map. Is the frog out of my league right now? Yeah, you're, uh, you're, so if you go to your quest log... It should say what level is uh yeah. associated with the Oof. quest. I'm a I'm a ways away from thirty two. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, no kidding, quest of Alright. Uh so then in that case, let's uh Uh Let me bring up my map, and uh, I'm going to have you lead me to this uh, Blade Baron guy. Because, like, another thing that, that people may not uh, people may not realize is uh, uh, I have a terrible sense of direction in real life, and it doesn't get better in video games. If, if you do that quest, the Nilfgaardian connection, it will lead you to the Bloody Baron eventually. There's just, like, three or four more steps before you get there. Okay, so that's... There. So if you like zoom out, uh, uh, move up to your like north a bit, like a bit more, you see that island uh, that kind of looks like it has a castle on it. Yeah, like that's where the Bloody Baron is based. That's also if you if you see that green chest, that's your storage box. So eventually you'll be able to drop uh, stuff in there that you don't want to carry anymore. Ooh. Okay. So. Regardless, I need to go the end of the crossroads. Yeah. I can swing that. I am by the Garen Estate. I think I can fast travel there. Yeah, I would go to the, the Garen Estate, fast travel to the Hangman's Tree, and then ride that way. All right, so that was north way is. Come on. All these birds. But like yeah, I, I have I have no sense of uh I have no sense of scale for maps, uh and uh I get east and west confused, so it 
It is always a fun time, me trying to navigate uh, <laughs> anywhere. Anytime Geralt, I see did Geralt just make a horse noise? <laughs> oh. A anytime I see you ride through a, uh, a group of crows like that, the uh, hunt showdown part of my brain freaks out a little bit. Go, go. I'm uh, trying to dismount. Oh, I gotta hold it. Got it. All right. I mean, Roach was doing some cool tricks, but uh, not what I needed him. <laughs> okay. We're gonna go there. All tutorial messages are saved in the glossary. Oh, that's okay. Uh, Phil, don't worry about offering advice. That's why I have Tom on the call. There's seriously like a... Like a minute long delay. Yeah. Uh, at least 30 seconds between what we're talking about and what is showing up on the YouTube feed. Yikes. OBS like super slow stuff down. Weirdly enough, I don't think it's OBS. I just think that it's YouTube. Maybe. Like... Like, uh, OBS just, uh, just takes what I have on my screen and is like, Here, YouTube, this is what you want to display on the live stream. Uh, YouTube's just, uh, you know. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe every, I think everything is algorithm fed. Uh, the singularity is going to be a lot, a lot more insidious than I think, uh, uh people realize. It's not going to be like, you know, Terminator style exo robots. Stomping us down. It's just going to be our phones refusing to do things. I don't. I don't feel like Geralt is taking safety seriously when he runs with a sword like that. Excuse me, ma'am. This guy just speaking Welsh? I mean, I'm gonna take the quest, but I don't want to work for the. <laughs> uh, that's the uh, elven language. That's Welsh. Yeah. I, I know Welsh when I see it. Mostly because they use things like app. Then both forces attack. One from either side. Cavalry sweep. Or what's the what's the button command for me to put away my sword? Uh got a reputation to think. Which which sword do you have out? Uh I wanna say the steel, steel one. Uh hit left uh direction button. There we go. Step away. Gentlemen. Captain Tail, can you see? Do not cast him out, Roderick. No. Roderick, do not cast him out. What do you want? Rejoice, for even a creature as depraved and base in nature as you Serve the glory of the oh, I think that this guy underestimates how depraved and based I am. I always like running into these guys on the side of the road. That's to be my good deed for the day. A handsomely profitable one, I might add. I know your kind don't work for free. What, capitalists? Uh, the, uh, the priests of the eternal fire... They're all over the place in uh, in Novigrad, and you get to mess with them pretty yes. hardcore. Are they uh, just like like really big Bengals fan or what? Dash generously and set alight, understood. Uh, like 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 so so I haven't read any of the books, which uh, is something that I might uh, rectify in a week or two. Once I've incinerated I find you. You know if I. Uh, 
if I uh, get a wild hair and decide like, man, I should read everything Witcher related. So they're like fanatics who believe that by uh, burning things, they will purify them. So recently they've been on a tear burning anything that has to do with magic. Mm, so I I've probably killed some of their dudes before. Were they the ones that tried to burn that elf chick? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I killed their guys, but that's okay. I'll take their money too. Okay, so that quest is on. Uh, should I go do that before I hit the crossroads or just uh, hoof that way? I mean, it's all up to you what you'd prefer to do. Uh, most of the little side missions around here will let you explore a little bit more of the map. All right. Let's... Uh... Funeral pyres. Wow. All right, well, let's uh, explore a little bit of the map then. Maybe. Okay. That's there, there, and third one. Okay. All right. Phil is presenting us with options for possible banter. Uh, hit me with one of them. Uh, so he says, uh, I don't think there's anything I wouldn't want to hear. Current events is always depressingly pleasant. Uh, good anime and TV question mark. And then he also said evaluating the current state of long versus short pants. Uh, which we know that we will never agree on that topic. No, no, we we shan't. Uh, Tom has a uh, uh, Tom has a tendency uh, to uh, to wear short pants, uh, much in the same fashion as a uh, as a sad Victorian child, uh, which I a, a lifelong Texan, mind you, uh, I believe is uh, a terrible way to comport oneself. Now, Tom, being from uh, initially the North, uh, says, "Oh, it's too hot. Uh, I I wear jeans every day of my life, <laughs> or at least I did prior to the pandemic." But now, it bears noting that uh, these days the concept of pants itself uh, has gotten significantly more shaky. Do I have to igni this, or, uh... Uh, I'm not sure. It might be place a bomb. I've forgotten how to scroll through. Okay, okay there's Quinn. Also, I noticed that one of the things that you fought there was a, uh... A rot um, fiend. A rot fiend, uh... You you seem to be aware of the fact that those things explode. So yeah, yeah. Once once they start the once they start moshing. Okay. What's the what's the command of fast? I, I feel like my mom playing Mario games now. Uh, it's it's one of the bumpers. I'm just not sure which one. That's the one. Le left bumper or right bumper? I'm not. There sure we which. go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's douse it and igni it. Cool. Okay, well, one down, three to go. Or two to go. Uh, but yeah, so I I don't think that uh uh. I don't think unless that unless they are uh uh playing basketball or uh a part of a fanciful parade uh, involving uh. Involving depictions of the Dutch boy, uh, that uh, that adults should should wear shorts. That's just me, because I don't wear shorts. Granted, the other reason that I don't wear shorts is because I am disgustingly Scottish, and uh, uh, my legs contain enough whiteness to blind people, uh, and I don't want to be a public health hazard. Shorts, though, hey, okay. But shorts? Nah. 
But Tom and I will never will never see eye eye to eye to on that. Not so long as Texas remains hot. Well, yeah, but you know, like not so hot that uh, uh that one must debase themselves with the wearing of shorts. So, uh, Phil brought up the idea of talking about good anime, and one of the animes that I've been watching recently that uh, Jen actually got me to uh, start watching is uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's been the hotness for a bit. We have binged through four seasons of that show in the <laughs> last, like, week and a half. Um, I, I like it a lot. Uh, so, I have a... Uh, uh, or, I should say had a once a month um, uh, RPG night uh, uh, like you you've been at um, the uh, Night's Watch a couple of times when we've been in there to play best game store uh, in town yeah and um, once uh, everyone is uh, COVID protected no, uh, we're going to be bringing that game back together and one of the uh, the potential games I put out there for for me to run is uh, a game called Masks, um, which is the Powered by the Apocalypse take on a uh, superhero game, mm -hmm. but specifically like a uh, uh, young superheroes like Teen Titans. And all of the like the playbooks that you play in it are uh, they don't decide like how your character like what what superpowers they have it's more like what kind of a superhero are you so like one of the example ones is like the legacy where your uh your parents were both superheroes yeah yeah i think we talked about this earlier and i recommended that you uh instead of making it a my hero academia style game that you style it after the uh disney original movie sky high with kurt russell yes oh yeah yeah yeah, Sky High is definitely going to be one of the inspirations. But uh, let's see, uh, good, good anime. Uh, I, I haven't, I haven't been keeping up very much. Uh, I mean, my, I, I have enjoyed My Hero, but I haven't like been keeping concurrent with it. Um, so I I think I'm at the eight, I think I'm like midway through season three. But um, let's see what 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 was the other one that I I, I like to I like to like find you know my my old uh my old favorites and then uh uh go back through the old shows and reminisce. And just see how cringy they are now after the fact. Well, I mean, look, Ronma One Half wasn't really aging well at the time. Uh, but it got it out of the way early, if that makes sense. Like, that show kind of embraced what it was and still manages to retain its charm for me. I, I have, like, a huge backlog of anime to watch because um, most of the anime that we watch is on Hulu, uh, and up until recently, uh, we had Hulu with ads, Mm -hmm. And watching Hulu with ads, specifically anime, is you just want to rip your teeth out in frustration. Uh, there's like five commercial breaks in a 24-minute anime episode. Wow. I'm done with this damn town. But now that we have, we upgraded it to uh, the no ads when uh, when we acquire Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we'll, we'll I, I can finally start going through it. So I've got like all of uh, Full Metal Panic to finish and uh, Psycho Pass, uh, Fairy Tale. Like th there's a whole bunch of them that's on my list to, to watch. Everything yeah, and I mean, I, I'm not a... Uh, the time I got reincarnated as a slime, I've watched a couple of times, but, like, isekais kind of, uh... They're all sort of the same to me, so... That's kind of, uh... I, don't, I wouldn't say that I avoid them, but I don't put them high priority. Nothing didn't pay me to burn the living. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't know what's good. Uh... 
My girl Tiffany has a has a Plex server with a uh, with uh, some shows that she enjoyed. Uh, so I usually go to her for recommendations, but uh, uh, I have been lax on that as well. Yeah. Do you have uh, Amazon Prime? I think we do. So for TV recommendations, um, let me. I need to look up the name so I make sure I quote it right. Now for a shot of Igni. Their their new series. I'm gonna so, step back uh, this time because last time I lit myself on fire. Wins. So there is a a series on Amazon Prime called Truth Seekers. Oh, with uh, a, yeah, the the ghost hunter with uh, with Nick Frost. Yes. And yeah, we watched Egg. that. Yeah. So Jen and I finished that a couple weeks back, and that series was absolutely amazing. Um, like the perfect combination of funny and creepy. So for so for a while, Amanda was uh, uh was was really getting into like. Not British dramas, but specifically British crime dramas. Uh, there is a show, uh, like, like, I don't know if you need, like, the BritBox subscription. Uh, because I think much in the same way that I had to buy an additional cable for my controller because it was just chewing through batteries. Uh, I need to... Hot dogs, huh. Uh... But uh, she watched a show called uh, Death in Paradise that I think you may be able to get on Amazon Prime. Uh, that is a show that I would say is actually worth paying the extra money for extra, you know, crumpet crunching, uh, H-dropping, how you doing, governor, uh, uh, content. And, you know, and don't, uh, you know, don't, don't read me wrong on this. I am... Uh, uh, I'm gonna loot your stuff, my dude. Yoinkity yoink. You see how effective Igni is on some yeah. enemies? Yeah, I, w I always forget to use my signs. It's uh. Wouldn't mind a look at your stock. This so guy will sell me stuff. There, there is one sign that you should really get used to using, uh, and that is uh. Is it the mind, hard? The, the mind control one. Uh, I can't remember what its name is. Uh, but that one is useful when you're up against um, either bandits or soldiers, because sometimes there are some that are very good at blocking and counterattacking. Uh, but if you hit them with that sign, it completely freezes them in place and you can just take them down. Good to know. Alright, I, uh, I stole all of the Nilfgaardian, uh, outfits. I mean, I kept them. I put them in my, my box. Yeah, but I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm only gonna keep one pair of the trousers. I don't need three identical pairs of shoes. Yeah, that's fair. Alright. I got anything worth buying? Powdered pearl. I mean, I, I, I don't bother buying... You're like, I'm just a thief. Well, like, usually you'll just find better stuff in chests yeah. anyways. Yeah, like, I, I just, uh, I just ripped everything out of this, out of this guy's, uh, chest, so. I mean, the, the, the developers of the game specifically said, like, steal whatever you want there's no mechanic in the game preventing you from stealing so take now, everything that isn't nailed down you said that but one time at a Nilfgaardian uh, 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 outpost I opened a chest and they ran me out of there that's really weird I've never encountered that before <laughs> it's, uh, if you go back and watch one of the streams I was like whoop whoop sorry sorry I think I even uh, I think I even said Tom told me there was no there was no theft mechanic. Yeah, I, I haven't had that happen to me, and I like my girl takes everything that isn't welded to the floor. And some stuff that is. I mean, if I can use Igni to get it up, uh, I'm definitely going to steal it. 
But uh but no, um I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of the last uh uh the last anime that I watched, but um Amanda watched a show called uh uh Midsummer Murders. I've heard of that show. So that, it's on that Netflix, I think. Yeah, I, I think I think some seasons are on Netflix, but that show has been running for like 20 years, right? Like that show is like the aha, a bandit. You don't Does Geralt even know his mother? Damn it. How? Uh, uh, I, Do I I don't I, I don't know if I can uh, definitively answer that question. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's I, a little extreme to, to call me a whore son. Uh, the the whoop. show the show implies that he does know who his mother was, but I don't know if it's true to the books. Oh, I need to eat something. Whoa. Uh, hold on to that fire for me, would you? I'm gonna uh, step away for just a second. I got to uh, let a couple puppies go outside. Ah, your weird little gremlin dogs. Yeah, they're demanding attention. Oh, look at look, look at little Mister Flourish. And let me uh, repair my weapon real. Just <laughs> take a moment. Uh, hold on a sec, there, uh, deserters. I'm just gonna just gonna sharpen my steez. Uh, but no, this uh, I cannot recommend Midsummer Murders. Uh, I'll explain why when Tom gets back because he desperately needs to hear this. Uh, Ah. Don't let up, says the last guy in the camp. Oh, no. Oh, there's this guy. Another, another horse boy. Another two horse boys. You hear a weird thumping noise, uh, Phil. It's because, uh... Uh, Q is outside and is quite upset that I'm apparently talking to somebody without him. Haha, <laughs> got your legs. Right, loot these fools. Let's see, uh, good anime. Uh, I've of course really enjoyed Demon Slayer. Uh, I saw recently that, uh, uh, that they're going to be releasing the Demon Slayer movie, uh, in theaters. And, uh, I love every part of that except the theaters part. Uh, stop trying to reopen society, y'all. Like, we're not there yet. But uh, if you haven't watched Demon Slayer, uh, check it out. It may, you know, it, it, it's your, like, standard pedestrian stuff. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, it's it's all anime that I've seen before. Uh, until, like, episode, uh, like, 19, and then you're like, oh. Oh, this is real good. This is real good, and it's been building towards this the entire time. Uh, which I appreciate. I like a story that's that's not afraid to be like, no, no, no. Take your time. We're gonna slow burn it. I I have returned. There you are. Okay, so that's why I couldn't talk to this weird guy because he was in a cage. Recognize from you from your goofy glasses and stupid hat anywhere. So the game was like, hey, talk to this merchant. Wait, don't talk to this merchant. He's locked up. Wouldn't mind having a look at your stock. 
I'm in a cage. Uh, but no, uh, let's see. Uh, so Midsummer Murders, right? Tom, this show consistently drove me nuts. Isn't that the show where basically everything is, I wonder who did it. It was the pores. It was the pores or druids or an incestuous uh, uh, nobleman. But like, like it was, it was the, the class disparity infuriated me to, oh, this haircut, uh, infuriated me to no small end. Because every time, like, like they would show one of the pores, right? Uh, one of the people who was suspect of these terrible, uh, uh, a terrible and completely, uh, uh, avoidable, you know, like, subplot, right? Like, oh, Lord Kensington was murdered at the, uh, at, at the, at the village Myrtleberry Festival. Yeah, I know, dude. Like, so, all right. I'm not gonna give this dude a hundred. No deal. Yeah, there, there's multiple ways you can get passes. Uh, there's like a, someone who, um, uh sells forged ones and then you can get one from another source like there's a bunch what of different of ways nearby all right Just to the southeast my sister's husband but, uh, business he and some lads tidy up is this dude problem is i feel like that guy story. in the background is like you know, he's what I feel like he's just taunting us like he's just watching and is like oh are we on are we on are we on camera yeah are we on camera it's delusion level one. Okay, I'll think it over. All right, see what I can do. Is he dabbing back there? Guy. But uh, uh, no. So it, it would be like you know, you'd cut to this this guy who you know uh, is the uh, suspect of. Just to, to interrupt for a second, I mm -hmm. would not recommend doing this mission yet. Go I to I shan't. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm, it, I'm returning to the priest of the eternal fire first. They're they're going to throw a whole bunch of I bet. um they're they're gonna throw a whole bunch of uh uh ghouls at you mm -hmm. and if the dude dies like you it's it's a an escort mission essentially Ew. with a whole bunch of ghouls thrown at you and well, if the dude I... dies you get nothing ah task? make sure to save before that yeah so uh, how confrontational do I want to be with these guys. Eternal question. Catch up. I'm not sure. I mean, I could just tell him I took I care of the graves, but instead, I think I'll poke him too. So late. The Church of the Eternal Fire's first duty is, is to living. Uh, but no. Uh, speaking of druids with uh with terrible fashion sense, so like like Midsummer Murders would have these these crimes where it's like somebody killed Lord Kensington at the Murderberry Festival. It might be one of the poor's. And then it would cut to the poor in question, and you'd have this guy who's like living in a uh, he's living in a house that is five times the size of mine. It's apparently very old, but it's you know like this charming rustic cottage. And this dude, the poor, is like the village chicken lifter, and he'd be like, hey. I wake up every day and I lift the chicken and then I put it down again and then I do the same thing at noon and I survive at merely a pittance. This house has been in my family for three generations, but I don't have the money to afford to, uh, to upkeep it. They only pay me 50,000 pounds a year to be the village chicken lifter and I would just get enraged. Like, I would just be, because it's such a shift, right? Like, it, it, it reminds me of when uh, MSNBC puts out those, uh, this is a budget that works for a family of four. Precisely, precisely. Where, where you got some guy that's like, oh man, it's getting really hard out there for the middle class. Like, take me, I only made $500,000 this year. I could only afford to take four vacations and it's just, 
It's really hard out there. And I was like, you, you what? <laughs> there were there were moments where uh, uh, where we've had to rely on like on like friends to keep us food secure here in America, my guy. Uh, I'm I'm really happy that uh, uh, that that our situation is uh, is to the point where we can like still manage to make mortgage payments, and I am super privileged on that regard. Meanwhile, Midsummer Murders is like, oh, it might be one of the paws. He only makes fifty thousand pounds a year. The village chicken lifter. There was literally an episode where uh, also, the mystery, like get this, the source of the mystery was a uh, was like a like it was set in a in a uh, posh British school, right? Like a boarding school. Uh, the murder in question was was done by uh, or was done to the head of the Pudding Club, which was apparently a social organization at this school <clears throat> that would have fancy desserts. The murderer literally killed people with a giant silver spoon. Tom, that might it might be the most British thing I've ever heard in my life. Tom, it drove me nuts, and every time Amanda would watch it, I would like slowly simmer with class rage. Uh, as an aside, village chicken lifter also sounds like the job of someone on House Hunters who has a budget of four million dollars. Right. <laughs> there, there is no uh, like. There is there is zero chill between uh Yeah, it is. Oh, I I've always had a problem watching even like like back in the day we watched uh Veronica Mars, right? Such a uh, good show. It it was a good show. It would have been I think a lot better if I didn't immediately hate all of the like preppy rich upper class characters the storm damn it i do not feel empathy for them tom i i find it difficult to even see them as human so i i know this was 30 seconds ago on the stream but anytime you come across one of those notice boards just take everything off of it okay because that, that's where you get quests and sometimes it'll put map markers on the uh, on the map for you yeah. All right, horse friend. Yeah, I was up here. Okay. I wonder if YouTube can do anything about this delay because it is aggravating. Well, that's okay. I mean, it allows me to, uh, uh, having you here is actually working out quite well because it allows me to focus on game. And if anything cool comes up in chat, uh, uh, yell it at Tom and, uh, go, go. All right. So, uh, while, while we have, uh, transitioned to some, uh, political topics here, <laughs> uh, can I express? He said, licking how... his economist chops. <laughs> Can I express just how important it is in modern society for people to know what the phrase precariat is? Like, right. so, so much, so many people think they are middle class when they are 100% part of the precariat. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it like, Theory is dry, right? Like that that's always the problem with uh uh with anything. People are like, "Ah, oh, I don't you know, they, they it, it's easier to get to get uh like pop culture uh assumptions on things, right? People say things like, "Oh, well, you know, like communism, 
They were our enemies in the 80s, so communists bad. Uh, and it's hard to kind of break through that. Uh, is, uh, is, is Geralt queer? I mean, quite possibly. I, I, I play him that way. Uh... But, uh, uh, but now, anytime you get somebody who's like, oh, I don't really, you know, you know these, like, I don't these jibe. Are the, these are the dudes who you will have to protect if you... If I talk to them? So don't talk yes. to them. Cool. Yes. All right. Uh, I was, I was going to do a thing. Yeah, alchemy. No. Uh, inventory. Where's my... My oils. All right. I want to put... Necrophage oil on my uh so eventually in addition to the uh the ghouls you'll start coming across I think they're al ghouls. Uh they're another uh enemy that you're gonna want to use that like mind control sign on. Uh because they're normally covered in spines, but it, it and the, those spines mean if you hit them, you, you take also damage take damage. Um so I, so I need to ask him to put them put them away. Yeah, command okay. them to put them away. I I think Geralt's more polite than that. Come on, Tom. I don't think you're giving our boy enough uh, enough credit for his social niceties. So eventually, you're going to be able to make an oil for your uh, steel sword that does more damage against uh, humans. Ooh. And that'll be one they'll probably keep on there like forever. There, there's one for the steel sword that does more damage to humans, and one that does more damage to animals. Hello. Come out. Quiet. Wait Come until out. he leaves. I'm not gonna leave. Dwarves. You last eat. Oh, children. Half a charred squirrel and a handful of berries. Half a charred. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anytime somebody's like, I don't really like communism, like, like, what are we, what are we as, uh, you know, we communists supposed to do, uh, be like, hey, well, here's, uh, here's some books written by an old, uh, an old white guy with a completely different set of experiences, uh, than you, um, uh, you know, like, read DOS Capital and then get back to me about, uh, what you think about economics? Uh, uh, don't read Das Kapital. I mean, ever. it's good stuff, but it's not well written. It's it's kind of like Tolkien, right? Like everybody loves Tolkien stories. Uh, very few people actually like Tolkien's writing, because that dude is going to go on and on and on about Tom Bombadil's beard, and you're just like, get 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 to the battles. I want to hear about the cool things. Uh. Yeah, you know, like literally, literally uh, can't see the forest because he's spending too long describing the trees. Uh, so, <laughs> so theory is uh, is is like hard to get behind, uh, and it's a lot easier to to kind of like sway public perception in terms of uh, of either like pop culture perception or the just the most widespread. Uh, news that people uh, uh, consume. So we have so, been we've been told for so long that like the middle class is you know uh, uh, is people that have say for instance apartments or rent homes uh, and that they're doing pretty well because they're not you know like living on Skid Row or or slumming in in the streets or. Uh, since the Reagan era, you know, God forbid, living in Section 8 housing, you know, being one of the one of the dreaded welfare queens, uh, we're all we're all a, a paycheck or two away from absolute financial devastation. Like we I mean, had, John, you may think that you know your. You're close to being poor, but have you considered the fact that J.P. Morgan did not have a microwave? He he uh, he uh, 
he had people who cooked his food for him. He didn't need a microwave. He basically had uh, indentured servants, like... But John D. Rockefeller did not have a TV, and you have a TV. I do so have therefore... a TV. And that, that's always that's always the hard thing with, you know, the concept that, uh, uh, that there is no, uh, uh, no ethical consumption under capitalism. Look, I'm playing on a really, on, on like a pretty decent computer, right? Like, I've got a green screen. I've got a fancy pair of headphones that no longer make uh, the back of my head look invisible. Uh... I could afford to eat at Whataburger today. Uh, lots of other people can't. But, like, that's the kind of thing that, uh, the only reason that we were able to do that was because we got back the stimulus of our own tax money, mind you, uh, that allowed us to pay off the bills. Like, it is just... All these people who were like, well, you know, um, we can't, you know, we can't afford to bail out the, you know, the, the, the lower me. class or otherwise it will disincentivize them to work. Oh, they are working what about? and they're working 10 times harder than, than the theoretical middle class. The middle class barely even exists. It's a very small subset of the population. Yeah, it, it's pretty much like. What what used to be conceived of as the middle class is now the upper middle class, mm -hmm. and people who are middle class or lower middle class are really just like got company. the, the next working level poor. Or yeah. In cape, vodka. All right, so this guy was trying to warn me away. Am I gonna have to merc these dudes? Who's this? Okay, chin strap. I already don't like you. Look, the two of these guys together make one functional beard. Wonder if he keeps an extra prick in his trousers too. You fuck Yes. Gonna say who you are? Or do I need to loosen your tongue with me knife? Alright, now I'm gonna have to kill all these guys. I'm always a big fan of getting Geralt into every Some confrontation he possibly can be in. He's having a drink. <laughs> Hear that? We've a distinguished gentleman in our midst. Shine your boots, governor. No. Governor. Wouldn't want the grime in your hands to rub off on them. Oh, he call you dirty. Oh. Bartender's like, dude. Did you hear what I heard? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> Don't make fun of people for not being able to grow good beards. No, I get that, but like, that is... One guy's like, don't worry, Bal, I got the mustache for this group covered. And the other guy's like, I've got the beard. <laughs> okay. I should probably pull out a sword, huh? Sometimes it's fun to just beat some ass with your bare hands. Ah, uh, Tom, this is a family stream. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But the, uh, so you were talking earlier about theory, and I mean, I'm, a, I, I have a lot of defining characteristics. Uh, I, I don't consider myself a Marxist. I consider myself a Marxian. Marx. Uh, I'm Marx-esque. So Mar Marxian means that I do ascribe to Marx's critiques of capitalism, but I don't necessarily subscribe to his ideas for what the solutions well, are Don't know where um Other side of the i'm i'm very much so on the uh the more the on the right. libertarian side of socialism uh mutualist syndicalists uh anarcho-socialism that sort of thing and i think reading theory the by people like prudhomme or kropotkin is a Shut lot easier than reading theory by uh by um like by Marx. Right, but it's still a real hard sell to be like, oh, don't read Marx, read the tyranny of bread instead. Uh it's the, still the written conquest, or the conquest of bread, yeah. It, it's I mean it's still a book written by a by a crusty white guy, right? I'd rather you not make any more trouble. Who looked like Santa? Well yeah, but so did Marx. He just looked like angrier Santa. He did like look the like, angry. like the <laughs> 
Like what was it, the like the Kurt Russell hot Santa that was uh, that was going around social media for a little while? Uh, but look, like looking at it, uh, uh, and like I I would be loath, or I, I suppose not really that loath, uh, to call myself a. Uh, all right, I need to make sure I have the right sword. Is it left for the? Is that my steel sword? Is left my, is steel, right, right is, is silver. silver. Okay. Uh, let me get my loot, and then I gotta kill. Are these the Bloody Barons, boys? That dude was carrying cotton. You, pal. I think these guys are Temerian deserters. Because uh, the, the Bloody Barons guys wear uh, red. Noted. Uh, but, uh, but no, like, look, we, we just, we just spent a, uh, we continue to spend ungodly, unimaginable amounts of money yearly on, uh, uh, on our military budget, right? Uh, so when we have infrastructure spending bills or, uh, uh, any kind of, it's always any sort of relief for the poor, right? Which again... Paid for with our taxes. I don't mean to get on the horse. I wanted to take stuff. Uh, anytime that happens, it's always like, oh, we can't, we can't afford it. Yeah, the, the CEO of Boeing gave himself an extra uh, 140 million this year. You know, just as a treat. 140 million dollars would make a tremendous difference in the lives of. Uh, of tens of thousands of people if you if you gave that to them instead and that guy did not do the do the additional work he did not provide the additional labor of 10,000 people missing Tamara Stranger daughter of the bloody baron every reward who for whoever finds her or brings her in as a Romeo and Juliet type thing isn't it Tom uh, sorry I was I was reading something what what is the you're reading the, the conquest class? of bread? No, I'm 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 on Wikipedia. Uh, what's catching the, uh, catching up on theory. But no, it, what was the quest? No, it was just the the wanted sign for the bloody baron's daughter. Uh, no, it's going to be a lot more complex than uh, than that. Oh, good. Like his his whole plot line is amazing, and it's one of my. Uh, I would say it's my second favorite plot line in the game from how far I've played. Uh, the best plot line, I think, in the whole game is the uh, secession or succession crisis for the King of Skellige. Trying to figure out who's going to be the successor. Not the successor. Yeah, not, not the people breaking away, but who's going to be the new... High King of Skellige. But uh, but no, man. Like, if, if there's if there's anything that uh that the continual and uh, recurring crises teach us, right? And and uh, for example, the uh, uh, the freeze that uh, that we experienced. Uh, uh, if if we have any viewers who aren't in Texas, uh, uh, all of my stuff is kind of like Texas centered because I don't travel anymore. Uh, but, uh, like, the freeze, right? The government was real, real slow to help anybody out. But neighborhoods got together. Like, we had neighbors that I hadn't even really spoken to because uh, I, I don't... I'm the only punk rock uh, adjacent person in my uh, uh, rather bougie uh, neck of the woods. So I try to keep to myself, lest I bring down everybody's property values. Uh, we had neighbors coming over and being like, hey, we have some water. Do you guys need water? You know, like, hey, uh, we, we, we had these steaks in our freezer uh, just making sure that you guys still have food. Uh... Meanwhile, Ted Cruz was flying to Cancun. Like, your politicians don't care about you. Uh, those that do don't have enough popular support because, again, the communists were our enemy in the 80s, and socialism will almost certainly lead to communism. 
and not like better standards of living all around. Yeah. And uh, you, you can't... It is the unfortunate truth that you can't convince people to break that uh, that mode of thought by being like, well, let me tell you about Kropotkin. You just have to put it in, in terms of, hey, look, uh, if, you, if you think that you're like middle class and uh, uh, when you get sick, calm down, it's over. Chill, calm the... If you think that you're middle class and the idea of taking off, uh, the idea of taking time off work gives you a minor panic attack, if you'd rather go to work when you're starting to exhibit the signs of, uh, of exhaustion because you realize you are replaceable and they have no problem being like, well, you didn't meet your KPIs this time. And even though you had those days off, we don't really encourage you to use them. Uh... Not you're not middle class. Not hunt. You're yeah, you're the herd, the you're just as vulnerable as everybody else. How a man can scream, how he can suffer. I mean, one one of my favorite things to do uh, is to bring up the paradox of Scandinavia. You know, when people are like, "Well, what what are your solutions? What kind of things would you like to see?" And then start bringing up the socialist programs in Scandinavia, and then when they inevitably counter with, "But those countries are capitalists; they're not socialists." Follow it up with, "Well, then why don't we do them here? Right, be capitalists. Right, like if if they're if they're capitalists, we can do that too." I cannot hear them. Like there, there's no, there's no reason why we shouldn't have, uh, uh, why we shouldn't have things like universal basic income. So universal basic income is one of those topics that like, it, it's really complex and there's a lot of like details that need to be ironed out when you're discussing it. Uh, because inflation is a thing and a lot of the like, value of uh, universal basic income could get eaten if there also isn't a thing like controls on rents. Right, right. Well, and, and that's that's the thing. Yes, inflation is a thing, but inflation is a thing because money is imaginary and the value of it is imaginary. And the, sad, the saddest thing that we of a society have done... Uh, he said as he watches a cutscene of, you know, his vil this guy's village getting raised. Uh, the saddest thing that we have, a, uh, as a society, have done is made ourselves absolutely reliant on an imaginary concept that changes at whim. I mean, it may be imaginary, but it is an effective way of rationing goods and services. The problem is, is that with money, you, uh, you run into the problem of because it is so imaginary people come up with ways to take money in order to make more money so they're creating more imaginary substance from imaginary substance and that inevitably is going to fall apart yeah and that's the that's the thing like the the comment uh, uh give me your imaginary money if uh, if you think it's imaginary <laughs> jokes on you i don't even have imaginary money <laughs> I mean, it, it is imaginary. That doesn't mean it doesn't have effect on the real world. Right, like... I mean, I could say some controversial look statements at, right Look now. at religion. <laughs> uh, but no, like, like, like look, at the, look at this whole uh, non-fungible token uh, shenanigans, right? Uh, you too can pay, uh, uh, can pay to make money off of a JPEG that is yours. Uh, yes. Pay enough money and you two can claim to own Neon Cat. Yeah, you can be like, oh, I own this work of art and it is worth this much. Is it though? Is it? Like the, the entire idea of stocks is uh, is offensive to me. Especially in the form that they are now. In their original form, when they were a uh, a way to have insurance for a company i mean i get that like Places where where somewhere. stock started out at but where they are now yeah. especially when you get into things like derivatives like that I, I as someone who worked in the finance field looked at a lot of things in 
finance and just found that like they don't make any sense i don't i don't know how you avoided being like even more viciously radicalized than i am i mean i am i'm just not super loud about it space under this rubble like i i'm uh I I definitely on the the side of um Marxian. most well most businesses should be cooperatives and um you know we're, i'm i'm a huge fan of workplace democracy see now that's that's the other sad thing uh as phil just put up sky daddy said the poor don't deserve our intangible wealth uh he said the exact opposite maybe they missed something uh we're gonna we're gonna go straight for the trousers first. Pockets. Yeah, trousers are stiff. His pockets. They've hung out to dry midwinter. Maybe hid something in his jerkin. <laughs> so there's a there's a concept uh, here. that mutualists are a big fan of check um, called Blood. labor notes. Um, so blue. labor notes are an alternative currency that isn't Gotta money. Uh, and one of the uh, the benefits of labor notes is that while they can be exchanged for good and goods and services, they can't change hands. Like, if I give you labor notes, they don't then become your labor notes. Like, I exchange them for something else of value from you. Uh, there, there were, like, several experiments done uh, of using labor notes, and they... They seem to work fairly effectively as a as a means of having a market without having money. But like that, like who determines the value of the labor note, though? The society does. the The individual community decides on its value. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for the uh, I'm all for the smaller scale. Uh, left unlocked on display, uh, almost lost his mind. Kind of trying to trying to find the right words, but also uh, pay attention to uh, uh, the Witcher senses. Uh, yeah, and, and that, that's that's the thing is that like there will always be there's always going to be somebody. You know, we we talk about how how things like you know like universal basic income and those concepts are uh, uh, are. Uh, are hard to maintain because of things like inflation, right? Yeah. Uh, labor notes will get inflated in just the same way. There's always going to be somebody who is looking for, ah, but there is a way that I can get rich off of this. And it doesn't matter what the currency is. It can be as stupid as a picture of a Shiba Inu for a sack of with a goofy uh, expression on its face. And someone's going to be like, now I am a millionaire and have worth. I just increase the you know the the value of my Doge coin. Clever. And I don't know what's going to be required for like as a society for us to break out of that mindset. Uh, Phil Phil just asked. Uh, so how would that work from community to commun to community, like from one state to the next? So the idea is that uh, communities form federations, and those federations come up with uh, agreements between each other for how to trade different goods and services. Uh, at that point, once once you get up beyond the like small scale local markets, you may decide that uh, it's all decommodified. That people that just uh, different communities and different federations of communities would trade based on uh what they need as opposed to necessarily what is valued at what to the peasantry village of midcops caution advised oh man i think that socialism does tend to work better on um uh on like governmental scales water in bucket froze solid you know like uh uh Communism works better, in my opinion. Uh, I should read Matt Brunig thought. I'll check it out. Uh, communism tends to work better on on like the smaller the smaller the scale, the easier it is to uh, to sort of lock in the idea of that it is voluntary, and that's the only way that communism works. Is communism has to be voluntary; it can't be state mandated. Yeah. Uh, 
Socialism, however, uh, absolutely can be uh, uh, can be state run. But it can also end up being authoritarian, which takes a lot of the added value out of socialism. Yeah, and and the and the tricky part. Will, come on, use the ladder, Gerald. Doing a weird little dance here. Why? Um. Going ahead. Just bugged everything. So, uh. Uh. So, mo momentary spoiler as you prepare to go to the Baron's castle. When you get there, he's going to basically ask you to start searching for his missing daughter. Well, the momentary, uh, the momentary spoiler is I may be defeated by the hardest boss in the game. CD Projekt's Red, Red's uh, use of ladders. What is going on here? I don't know. I'm hitting the use button, but Geralt apparently can't climb. Uh, you could always try, yeah. Okay. Exiting out and coming back in. Let's just load the game. And... Load the yeah, there... save slot. <laughs> There's a very funny uh, moment when, like, you go to talk to uh, the Baron... And he's gonna get you to like look for his uh, his daughter, and one of the things that Geralt can can do is like, hey, can I look through her quarters if that was the last place she was seen? And uh, the Baron will like give you pushback against it, where he's like, I don't want anyone pawing through her things, and Geralt can can be like, I'll be respectful, and then immediately go in and start like and start pawing through her, through her things. <laughs> Yeah, okay. All right. Uh Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I'm going to be defeated by the uh by the ladder boss. All right, so let's code this checkpoint. The witcher's contact in Velen was to be Hendrick. No, it's a uh, uh you know, one of the one of the biggest misconceptions that uh, uh, that a lot of people tend to have is that like you know, things like what universal basic hell? income, what with the latter? Yes. Yeah. You may have to go back before the previous save point. Yeah, I went back to the uh, uh, to the latest like auto save checkpoint. Oh, but I'm still down in the basement. Okay. Just let me climb. That's jump. That's use. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We have defeated the ladder boss. <laughs> I am a good gamer. Now we're going to save. Okay. Keep private equity tax. Yeah, tax IPOs, mergers, trades, one-time large taxes area makes tax fund the sovereign wealth fund. Yes, I I I agree with that, and that's that's the thing. I am ideally I'm uh, I'm much more radical in my uh, in my economic thought than uh, uh, than I think is practical. Right? I, I have I have a utopian uh, mindset that just says, hey, people will help each other if given the chance. Uh, and I mean, that is borne out by like sociological studies. Right. But we have to like, like the only way that I think that we can build society, uh, that, uh, uh, that serves, you know, serves to, uh, to promote those values, uh, is to, uh, is to devalue the concept of wealth you know like like we've we've used wealth as a as a metric for uh for personal success for far too long is there a key around here that i can get in that because i doubt that i will remember to come back here uh 
I don't know. But yeah, but like, like, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the idea of, uh, uh, as a, as Tumblr meme worthy as it is, of a maximum wage. Yeah, I agree. Like, um, I think, I, I think I, that after you make a hundred million dollars, you should get a, uh, like a plaque that says, "Congratulations, you won capitalism," and, uh, so uh you might then everything blow, after that. You might be able to blow that door open with, uh, with Ard. With Ard. All right, well, get Ard. Knock, knock. Nope. Yeah. Do I have to melt you tried. this? Yeah. An attempt was made. Um. And while while we're on the topic, uh, the um the whole idea that um. Yeah, like wealth so is, it, wealth is just a part of power. We can't devalue it because it has value. Uh, wealth is value, uh, value is an arbitrary value is an arbitrary conception. <laughs> like we can't devalue it because there are there are because those that have it keep telling us how important it is. Uh, and we we should largely ignore those people and stop letting them push us around. <laughs> But it is it is a hard sell because uh, because we've we've worked ourselves in a uh, uh, into a position where you know somebody with wealth can literally solve all of the problems that an individual has by giving a fraction of that, right? But like there like there's no reason why uh, why Jeff Bezos should be allowed to keep all of that money. Uh, there's no reason why why Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or or any of the uh, of the oligarchs should be allowed to continue doing that. F Phil is heading out. Let's give him a shout out. Hi, Phil. You have too many L's in your name. <laughs> it offends me on a linguistic level. But yeah, so like just how uh, sociology studies have shown that like if people have the capability to do so, they will help out other people. Uh, like one of the, the conservative capitalist talking points is like, if you provide people welfare, they're all lazy and they won't work. And sociology studies have also shown Let's that's go. not true. People do want to work. They do want to do something. They just want what they're doing to be something that they feel means something. Yeah. Like, working in a cubicle farm as a human yeah. robot is not fulfilling, and people don't want to do it. But if you give them the opportunity to do something that actually, like, means something, and they can see the positive effects of what it is, they will want to work. Well, and also, like, like doing doing the work that people find, uh, find uh, personally satisfying, you know, like, like ev every... Everybody has a okay. There we go. Uh, everybody has something that they want to do, right? Even if it's just a a, a hobby or uh, oh. dance. hang on, I gotta I gotta dance first. I gotta get the horse to start. Geralt would be uh, the way that I ride horses. Geralt would be excellent at dressage. Uh. But like I like I I would love to uh, uh, I would love to to do more writing. It's but it's time consuming, and the vast majority of uh, of the people that like share these hobbies and passions. If you if you join like a writing support group, you know people that that'll like beta read your stuff or provide uh, uh, provide constructive criticism or critique. Uh, Nobody's got the time because everybody's yeah. exhausted from working at the jobs that they don't want to go to. You know, Amanda has so many fantastic ideas uh, for for writing projects that she wants to do. And then it gets difficult because by the time that she gets home from her job at Home Depot, she needs to sleep. You know, like. So your time is spent either working or recovering from work, and you don't really have the time to do anything else. Uh, 
I think that a that a a benefit to uh, to promoting things like universal income would be a rapid and uh, U.S. taxes would help with that. Yeah. Uh, I think that you would see an explosion of things like art. Oh yeah, of course. Because I mean, all of the so all of the people that want to make that art and want to invest the time to improve in that craft, the people that are passionate about making music, uh, the people that are uh, uh, that uh, that are excited about making uh, visual media, uh, people that want to that want to uh, write new stories or become you know become authors, uh, comics, any medium you can think of. If they aren't desperately worried about their survival, that's what they're going to spend their time focusing on. Take it easy. Just a little short. I mean, that's that's basically what Kropotkin talks about in Conquest of Bread. Absolutely. Is, you know, once we have gotten to the point where people's basic needs are met, they can then begin fulfilling, doing the things that they find personally fulfilling. Yeah. Um, like, one of the things that I've talked about recently over the, the last couple of years or so is like, why do we work eight hours a day, five days a week? Why is that a standard work week when the amount of value produced per worker has only skyrocketed over the last like few decades? Now we have the technology to, uh, uh, I mean, like, like how, how much of the work that, uh, uh, that we did when we were, uh, cubicle dwellers, uh, how much of the work that we did was functionally bullshit. Yeah. Like, it was it was just there to take up our time. Because we had to be there for eight hours. If you can get the work done in three, then you couldn't just, you know, so at, hang out at, for at, another five. You had to, well, here here's a task. Yeah, I guess I'll go through and reorganize all the old spreadsheets. Why am I doing this? Well, you got to do something. As an aside, can we talk about how ridiculous this castle is? I haven't even, I haven't even taken note. This it, the it's on, it's, it's made on of wood. An island. Yeah. With only one way on or off, so anyone who wanted to besiege it, all they'd have to do is burn that wooden bridge, and everyone on board would be trapped indefinitely. Like it is not a good design. I mean, maybe not defensible placement. Uh, I see you. Ow! I, I see you and I was not fast enough to dodge. You just got randomly attacked? I mean, it says they're the Baron's henchmen, so I don't know why these guys are so aggro. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know either. Hey, not. I hope he's not mad that I just uh, slaughtered a couple of his boys. Yeah, I don't know why they're so aggro either. Maybe it's because there is a theft mechanic. I did go in and like... Take some stuff, I saw it. Yeah. That. And then That's I walk, walked outside and they lobbed an arrow at me and I'm like, Hey now. I wonder if they added that in a later like patch to the game or something. Aaron Stranger presumed kidnapped. So it's uh so Anna Stranger and what was the name of the daughter? Tamara. 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 Put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. What do we think about ending ethanol purchases and having the government buy up uh, crashing farm prices? Uh, I mean, I don't know like the. I don't know the ins and outs of uh, uh, of those markets. Like thoroughly honest, I have not. Uh, I'm not going to act like I'm an expert on uh, on on economics in the slightest. Uh, I am an idealist. I I think that it's. Uh, uh, I think that it's bullshit that we have so many people starving when there are uh, uh, you know guys making millions of dollars off of trading imaginary ideas uh, to answer for me personally i'm not a big fan of subsidies uh 
to defend quote unquote down. too big to fail businesses. I move. Hey, smug cowboy. Moo has decided that he wants to uh, co-pilot. Uh, here's a here's a here's a question though. Uh, do you do you hate farmers or do you hate uh, the uh, the fact that they get uh, government welfare where the rest of us don't? How about that? It takes a tired old man. Not so maybe in the future, money. John, just don't rob anything that's in like a. A quest, yeah, like area. a. Oh, I don't know what a when where faction area. Well, I mean, like if you're in an area where there's like a major big quest giver, don't take uh, stuff there. Like I, I don't remember ever Greetings. running into a Greetings situation that aggroed Other villagers all people like that. They saw me. You didn't. Oh, I, I'm too old to scurry. Besides, what could you do to me? Kill me? See, all these, all these Go people ahead. are just. I've not long to live. Getting on Geralt. No, like, like I, I, I think that uh. So like, like American agriculture's, uh, in a in a weird kind of position, right? Uh. We uh we produce enough food to feed everybody in our country. Uh, more than enough food. We we uh. We export a very large amount. We export a very large amount, and then the rest of it we. Uh, we throw away and leave to rot. Right? Like, like we discard a, a shocking amount of food uh, uh, rather than give it away because that would lower the value of it. But at the same time, the problem is the value is, ima is imaginary and indeterminate. Lived here long. Mm. You know, uh, so... Since I was born. Yeah, getting paid to not sell crops is uh, that's that's crap. There, there, there are people starving. Give it to them. Give it to them. There's no reason not to give it to them. Well, except that going through the front gate, somebody further up the uh, up the capitalist chain won't make money off of it. And if you tell people that they can have something for free, well, then they expect it for free because it should be free. Yeah. Like. Do we want to get into the whole topic of commodifying Fine. water? Don't no, we do not. <laughs> I mean, like, like, and and this is, you know, like, you don't, you don't have to read theory to get this. They were commodifying air and space balls. Like, this is, this is classic movie villain crap. You know? Yeah. Tragic. <laughs> we we need to stop idolizing, uh, like, as a society, we need to stop idolizing or even giving credence to people that behave. Like villains in crappy '80s movies. Clever man. I do not understand the internet's fascination with Elon Musk. He is legit. A supervillain backstory. Yeah, he he wants to go to space. He's Lex Luthor warned us about this. The only reason why he is rich is because his father owned a emerald mine in apartheid South Africa that used de facto slave labor, and he stole emeralds from his father's mine. Yeah, he's a self-made man. No, he's not. No, he's not. There is no self-made man. Yeah, it's just... And, it, and it, it's frustrating, you know? It's, uh... So you're a man well traveled. My, my situation, it, and, it, and it's always, it, you know, this always comes with, like, a, uh, like a host of caveats. Uh... I, I was, like, I was raised, uh, with the perception that, uh, uh, that we were, like, like, that my family was upper middle class. Uh, uh, at various times in our life, we, we actually like, like suffered relatively, uh, extraordinary poverty, but we covered it well because there was such a huge, uh, uh, there was such a huge push from the culture in which we lived to engage in enough conspicuous consumption, uh, that we didn't come off as poor. Yeah. My family was much the same way. Yeah. Um, and then... 
you know, like, so like I, you know, saved up and went to college and, uh, while in college, I worked four jobs and got on scholarships so that I could afford to go to college because at that time, uh, that was the, the quote unquote normal track. Now I went to college for an incredibly unmarketable degree. I went to go study theater Passage must be somewhere around here. in retrospect, a mistake. <laughs> Uh, not not studying theater. That's uh, that's been full of all kinds of uh, uh, of useful uh, useful skills. But uh, uh, where I went to study was also uh, uh, influenced by that culture. I mean, I went to college, but I went to college because I was part of the Great American Jobs Program, aka the U.S. military. Mm-hmm. Which I never could have qualified for. Uh, the yeah. uh, the spinal surgery at eighteen uh, uh, knocked me out of the physical running. Yeah. So no military for uh, for young John. Uh, for hey, uh, homeboy was uh, uh, was fat and couldn't run anyway. But also, uh, you know, can you carry a? Uh, a 50 pound rucksack? No, not unless you want my spine to break. Yeah. Okay, so now we get to water mechanics. Yeah, I highly recommend, like, sooner rather than later, go for that, um, the skill, uh, for, uh, combat that lets you fire two crossbow bolts. So that, I, um, so that I can do underwater fighting. Yeah, because especially when you get to Skellige, there's gonna you're gonna be fighting sirens and harpies, and they're you, the only way to really fight them is with your crossbow. Oh, uh, and to answer uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, Captain, uh, the theatra. We went to study the theatra, but we performed in theaters. Do I have to dive under all this, or can I? Up out on this onto this ledge. Uh, I think you can surface now. There we go. Maybe. Oh, uh, we may have run into the second ladder boss. But yeah, but I went. I went to study the theater because because uh, uh, I wanted to be an actor. It, it was something that uh, that I enjoyed and uh, uh, found fulfilling. And I put in uh, a decade of work, and it was ultimately the political. Uh, come on. Come is ultimately the political uh the political like like landscape of the time. Uh, I got ostracized from the cultures uh that I was a part of because I voted democrat. And uh in in 2000 uh uh early 2000s era Abilene that was uh that was functionally the same as as saying uh, that I loved the Satan and uh, uh, didn't believe. Uh, you you didn't vote for our Connecticut-born Yale graduate cheerleader Texan president. I I think I think uh, that uh, that physical therapy uh, any therapeutic endeavor is a worthwhile and worthy endeavor. Like, I think that our I think that our main goal really should be help people as much as you can because there's people that need help, and if you can help in some way, and especially then if you can uh, if you can also like you know uh, uh, do so in a way that uh, oh that ain't good, lady. Oh yeah, I do have a torch. Inventory. Later, later on in the game, you'll get a. Uh, there's an alchemy potion called Cat Eye that lets you see in the dark, and it's very useful. What's that in pocket? That's an. Water hags are a good uh, target for Igni. Good to know. They they don't like being set on fire. I mean, I don't know anybody that does. No, <laughs> that's a lie. I actually... 
if it's controlled, but... Uh, eventually you're going to fight trolls a few times in the game, and they will completely ignore fire. How do I, uh, how do I use pocket stuff again? A button for that. Where's my control scheme? Uh... Don't forget to put your horse blinders on Roach. I see him there in your inventory, and he's not wearing them. Options, controller settings. Right, right. Scheme. Where is use button in pocket? Ground press change objective. Use quick access item. Right bumper. That's it. Yep. Except it don't do. Because you don't have one selected. You need to go to your little wheel and select one. Uh... All right. Did, did you saw the horse blinders in my inventory? Yeah, but they weren't on Roach on the right hand side. The the there horse blinders go. make it where he's less likely to panic. I think she. I think I yeah, think Roach it, is a she. I think Roach is a they. Like he just keeps renaming all of the horses, right? Uh, yeah. Every time his horse dies and he gets a new one, it's it's a a roach all right now we're cooking with torch ooh a superior saddle oh yeah no it's a uh... The, the realization that, like, all of the stuff that, uh, that I, like, that I struggled with in terms of, of the, uh, vast levels of injustice, uh, in the world, uh, I got my new, uh, and I've experienced far, like, far less of that than other people. You know, I'm a, I'm a mediocre, uh, a mediocre cisgendered, uh, heterosexual white guy. Like, my struggles have not been, uh, comparatively much. That doesn't invalidate them, but, uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't do more to help, uh, to help our fellows, you know. Yeah, of course. Uh, it is a hard sell for people who are uh, who are profit motivated. Like, well, but then that means that I have to, you know, have to take less. Well, yeah, but that's okay, because then you'll have other people there to help you. I mean, there okay, have so been. Need to, I need to be back in the cave. Th there have been so many studies done uh, by uh, psychologists about, uh, like. CEOs and lawyers and major stock traders and stuff like that that show that the uh, people who are in those like high profit motivated jobs have an increased likely to have either uh, BPD or psychopathy and it's kind of like uh, yeah yeah I, I could have told you that I've met them light Explore around here. Oh, a woven silver sword. I'm using the viper silver sword now, so. I mean, eventually, if you go travel around and, like, find all the little, like, weapons caches and stuff like that that are hidden all over the map, there are some really badass magical swords you can pick up. I'm here for uh, uh, for whatever uh, Malgoth shenanigans I can get into. The uh, the 
the coolest one that I have found in the game. And if you really like a sword, you can always have a blacksmith reforge it so it's better. Um, but the, uh, uh, the, the one that I like the most is one that has a chance to just ignite enemies. Like, it, it increases the, uh, the likelihood that you can just light an enemy on fire. Metal. Okay. Uh, I... I think you have to go up. I think there might be a ladder around here somewhere. Another a boss fight. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, uh, so like, like this, this may be uh, running into the same kind of problems that I had with uh, uh, with Senua, where it was like, like I'd just run against a wall for a while and be like, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, there it is. Excellent game recommendation, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I did I did play it uh, after getting my eyes dilated, uh, which in you retrospect played... was probably not the best of ideas. You played it with your headphones on? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Full on creepy whispers in your ears? Yeah. Uh, but I like also every visual uh, jump scare got to me because my eyes were super sensitive to light for several hours. I was like, ha, 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 ha. Getting hit from both ends. What'd you think of their uh, interpretation of uh, of um, Viking mythology? Of the uh, of the Norse mythology, pretty good. Yeah, uh, much more much more down to earth uh, in the grim and gritty, uh, gritty grim and gritty sort of sense. Uh, I I, li I like the fact I I don't you don't usually see uh, uh, picks as a uh, uh, as a protagonist choice. So yeah, I personally indeed. appreciated that quite a bit. In Pesima, those were balls. <laughs> so. So, uh, Crusader Kings 3, I don't know if you've ever played any of the, uh, Paradox Interactive games. Um, that came out just like a, uh, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and already the modding community has, like, really taken it and run with it. But a mod came out yesterday that I've downloaded but not played yet, uh, called, uh, Tales of Ireland. Uh-huh. Uh, so normally, like, Crusader Kings 3 is a map of all of Eurasia and Africa north of the Congo. Um, so basically, like, all the way to the very edge of China in the east, uh, all the way south to just north of the Congo, and then all the way north to, like, the Arctic Circle. Right. Um, this is a total conversion mod that takes that whole map and just makes it Ireland. And it's Ireland at such a scale that all, like, 1,200 counties of Ireland are represented on the map. Um, but it's meant to be, like, you play through the mythology of Ireland. Oh, good. So, so you have to deal with, like, the Tuatha de Danann and the, uh, the Fear Bolg and, like, all of the various mythological creatures whose names i'm mispronouncing oh yeah no no don't <laughs> man i i have i have gotten decent and like conversational uh uh scots gaelic uh irish gaelic is still uh is still beyond me <laughs> like it is like trying to speak with a with a mouthful of marbles yeah i'll drink with this dude why not He's gonna try and poison me isn't he he's not he's a okay. really cool guy I, I like of all the NPCs that you run into, uh, I think he's really cool. I, I like him a lot. Um, his whole quest line is a lot of fun. Uh, it can turn out about a dozen different ways. Like there's a dozen different possible endings. Uh, 
without spoiling how I got there, the ending I ended up going to, he ends up hanging himself at the end of it. Uh, but learning about all of the choices that got me there, I wouldn't have changed anything. Because I still feel like I made the right choice along the way at every step. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't have time for, uh, how do you like it here in Velen? Uh, don't care. <laughs> didn't come here to talk about You're wrong to I picked a bunch of your flowers, my guy. Just, yeah. And the local swamps and bogs, they're interesting to say the least. Yeah, there's a, uh, I ended up looking up, like, what the, um, the uh, quote unquote everybody lives solution is mm -hmm. of all of the different choices and uh, without spoiling what it requires there's basically one just require step just requires your moral compromise as a person yeah like there's one step in the process where I'm like yep not doing that <laughs> what's that definitely not doing that that is a bridge too far as clever as I suspected you I don't know if I'm just getting off on uh, off on the wrong foot with this guy, but he's not he's not particularly impressing me. Uh, he he comes off as as a dick at first. It's only later, as the the storyline progresses more, that you find out he does have some redeemable traits, and he is willing to do whatever it takes to save his family. Well, I mean, most people are. Yeah. I don't know. He ain't special. Girl. Siri, Siri, you spent all of that time training tumbling. So is this my is this the first time where I play as Siri? Uh yes. Ooh. And you'll get to do it a whole bunch more. I have when, a when, when she dodges, she teleports. When you play as Siri, you cannot access the inventory or use signs. <sighs> And I don't have my uh, my Witcher sense. Correct. So for so for her, it's more just like straight up the her combat her side of things. Yeah, it, her sections are very linear too. You're not going to be going off and doing a whole lot of investigating. She needs help. Well, that's cool though. I mean. I still, I still haven't played it. I owned it, uh, but I'm saving it until I can uh, set up an additional stream. Th this is just Final Fantasy 15, right? What, what are you talking about? Combat wise, like the whole uh, teleporty uh, shenanigans. Uh, she doesn't teleport that far. When, uh, when she dodges, uh, she'll move the same distance that Geralt does. She just teleports instead of. Uh, Iron instead trees. Of rolling. You can calm down. There's all these feral children in Fantasy Poland. I mean, there's been a war on, and a lot of adults have been killed. Hello there. Are you lost? No, I guess. Are you? Yeah, constantly. Yes. <laughs> also, just a little. I managed to get to the Whataburger today, and, uh,. That's like the second farthest trips uh, I've taken from my house in months. So, yes, I am constantly lost. You want a cool facial scar? How did you wind up here? My father brought me, told me to follow the trail of troops and eat my fill. So here's here's a here's a question, kind of getting back to the chat. Uh, uh, God says, I just want to make money. I'd sell derivatives if I thought I could profit. Uh, but to what purpose? You and your father. Putting rims on a gold jet ski? Right, like two chains? Three chains? More chains? So we must go east. Come, I'll walk you home. I'm like, yeah, I, I too, uh, uh, I would like to make money, uh, uh, because otherwise, you know, they take away my home. Uh, 
But uh, I, I would much rather not have to. And you see him? Yes, I mean, that would be super cool. From behind a tree, he was huge. I want to be rich enough that I can afford to take a cruise a year. Horrific. And that really isn't asking that much. See, I, I want to, I want, I would love to be wealthy enough that, uh, uh, that, uh, uh people that I know also aren't worried about where they're going to live. Kings do too. Come. Like, you, you know, if, if, if it was the kind of thing where, you know, uh, my, my wealthy, uh, uh, secret uncle died and, you know, had been following me on social media and liked my hot takes uh, and decided to leave me, you know, uh, 150 million dollars. I would literally just buy like a small apartment complex and uh, uh, rent it out to people that I know uh, for like cost. You know, like, hey, I'm gonna need this much to get the AC fixed. Uh, everybody, uh, everybody, chip in. Ooh, I don't have any, I don't have any foods. I should make a point uh, to... I, I think she heals over time. Oh, well. Just dodge, dive, dip, and dodge. Yeah. It's part of the whole Siri having elder blood is one of the things she has is healing over time. So like the I, I don't know how familiar you are with the mythology in this. Uh, not. But like, I have not. Uh, so, I have not read the books. I, I saw the Netflix series. Yeah. Uh, so you you watch the opening uh, like cinematic of this, right? Yeah. Of uh, so where they talked about the conjunction of the spheres. Mm hmm. So that's where all magic and also monsters came into the world, and uh, it was um basically the elder races uh elves and then the precursors to humans that caused that to happen um and a handful of people in the world have elder blood like siri is one of them yeah um and that lets them do like crazily powerful magical acts. Something within me um, like her mom in the uh, in the the Netflix series where she basically like Netflix. shut down that entire room Something and practically destroyed close. everything in it. That's the kind of thing that like people with elder blood can do without even trying. Phenomenal cosmic power. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I agree, Rob. Those are. Like, that is not normal wolf behavior. <laughs> These wolves are particularly frisky. <laughs> like, usually you hit one of them and they're like, no, nah, this is not worth it. There are deer out there. Wait here. Don't come any closer. But, no buts, stay here. You must see something. Feral children can be used as, uh, as early warning devices and uh, trap sponges. Start with the eyes. Bloodshot, but still moist. He died recently. CSI, Fantasy Poland. Lips parted <laughs> and bloated. But clear through his tongue. Immense pain before death. Ah, his chest is crushed. Ribs probably pierced his lungs. <laughs> Feral children Something used as pets. The problem is, the, is that uh, is that the feral children uh, usually have uh, a grasp of language, uh, which makes them significantly less cute. He tore his leg off. No, gnawed it off. Ew, that's horrible. Stay there and look away. You want to take a guess as to what the Wolf What's King this? is? Marrow's missing. Werewolf. Yep, you're gonna have to fight a big ass werewolf. Be still my beating heart. Oh, his liver's gone. Why are you digging through his belly? Would you mind making certain your laces are tied? Coming up, it's a werewolf. It seems. Except he's a werewolf. Or because the liver is missing, he's a 
Baptist who's eating at Luby's. <laughs> a, a bunch of wolves strapped together. <laughs> just a just a Katamari democracy of wolves. No silver, but I can make a blade oil. I mean, that is what a rat king is. Precisely. No, a far more special oil. So I haven't played it yet, but I have seen parsley gameplay of it. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two. One of the bosses in that game is the Rat King, uh, and it is a whole bunch of zombies all mushed together. My uncle, Uncle Vesemir. And that is unpleasant. Uh, that sounds... That sounds like a gnarly boss fight. Besides, aren't, aren't, uh... I haven't played the Last of Us game, so I, I may just be, uh... Uh, talking out of my ass here, but aren't the... Uh, aren't the zombies in that game, like, fungal? Yes. Yeah, that's basically how they're all stuck together because they're uh, the fungus has overgrown them and caused them to fuse. Fuse. Yeah. That's something that I enjoy using in the uh, ah uh, in my D and D uh, campaigns is I think that like myconids and uh, the uh, the demon queen Zugmatoy are. Fun to use. Indeed. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm a big fan of the uh, the various fungal people in uh, in D and D. Also, talking about D and D, like, and the comment earlier with these very persist persistent wolves. I'm definitely a big fan in RPGs of uh, making enemies realistic. Like, eventually they're gonna get to a point where they're like, nah. I'm just gonna surrender or run away They're gone. because Get like out. I'm not being paid enough to die over this the wolf king will be angry it's dead but a pig here I mean if they see an opportunity for surrender that is yeah like I I definitely couldn't see those ghouls surrendering against mad Tam that probably would have been a bad idea no no problem All right, I have everything. Now for a spot where I can build a fire. That last wolf had some in pep in its step. No Jump. kidding. Like, he's a... <clears throat> he's a toughie. I don't know, I don't know if, uh, if using the control, uh, has the same... I, I, I keep, uh... I think Senua may have, may have influenced me too much. I keep trying to switch target by, like, thumbing the right stick. And uh, that does not work in this game. I'm I am forced to be much more positionally uh, aware. Right, right. Uh. There's the there there was a little a little like timer looking thing under my uh Belly's all in blood. Uh under my health bar. I don't know what that means. No wolves did this. Uh I don't know. Like it was definitely counting down and that Im immediately filled me with a sense of dread. <laughs> the wolves should unionize. But I don't I don't support monarchy even in the animal kingdom. So what are uh here's a here's a question for you, Tom, uh, apropos of nothing and not relating to uh uh our political landscape. What were your thoughts on uh on the death of Prince Philip? And the cultural reaction from that. I mean the entire British royal family could fall off a cliff and I wouldn't mind. You and I agree on that regard, my friend. I mean, there there are some royals in some countries that actually do something of value, but for the the British, the amount that they uh, take compared with the amount that they give back, in my opinion, would not be worth it. And I mean, 
I think last time they did a major poll of uh, the British people, I think like... Did I, did I already apply the wolf oil automatically? I think so, yeah. Okay, good. Um, but the... Uh, the last time that they, they did polling of the... Uh, the like popularity of the British royal family, like basically like asking people in the UK, like, would you like to transition to a republic? It's now approaching 50%. Yeah, I, I, I saw uh, I saw one take that was like, no, the royals are still important because they bring, uh, yeah, they bring billions of dollars in, in tourism. Uh, like, like, bro, the palaces will still be there when they're gone. Yeah, I mean, you can put up a statue of David Bowie and people will flock to see it, like, I mean, they do. There is one. Yes. <laughs> You're lucky we came this way. Found someone far like away. people, people go to England for uh, uh, for cheeky Nando's and banter. Uh, you don't need you don't need a, an oligarchical uh, uh, class that hangs on to the idea of divine right, uh, an idea that is only made popular by a bunch of inbred Germans. Like you don't need to, you don't need that to promote uh, people to come to your country. You have, you have silly accents. People will come to hear that. That's that's why Texas gets a lot of uh, a lot of tourism. <laughs> that and barbecue, like. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of like political dynasties in general. All right. So we are a couple of hours in. I say uh, let's get to a good uh, stopping point and, uh, uh, and close down for the night so that I can make some delicious food. Yeah, you should be jumping back to uh, Geralt any minute now. Awesome. Well, it might, might not be yours, the older one, but you've got to admit the likeness. So this dude's trying to cash in on like, hey, I found Tamara. That, that's not Tamara. It's Tamara adjacent. <laughs> it looks like she could be a Tamara. Uh, I brought you something that is generally like your uh, like your daughter. You gonna you gonna pay me? I've not eaten in. Pleased you like it. I then prepare a bath for you once you've eaten, and you could do with some sleep. In the nook behind the, heart. the likeness is downright striking. Like she doesn't look anything. Yeah. You'll run. You'll, you'll run into Tamara later, and <laughs> they don't look anything alike. She is she is human shaped? Yeah. Like like the the weird thing to me was seeing everybody's like, oh my god, Prince Philip. That dude was ninety nine years old. <laughs> I mean, he looked like the Walking Dead already. Yeah, like I, I was surprised that he wasn't dead already. The little girl who showed up here with Siri. What happened to her? Gretchka. She's safe and sound. It was a, uh, it was a very, a very weird moment. But like, I, it's always confused me why Americans, especially with with all of our. Uh, uh, raw, raw freedom, uh, you know, yay revolution, you know, we're, we're the best thing to ever come from Britain rhetoric. Uh, I don't know why we have any fascination with the royals at all. I just uh, did some quick Googling. I didn't realize he was Greek. I didn't care. Congratulations, you're a prince. Prince Philip of the House of Glucksburg. Find my loved ones, and I shall tell you. How, how is Glucksburg doing these days? Not, I mean, it only rules Denmark. So. Oh, well, good for Glucksburg. Will you tell me to sod off? Go ahead, but then I'll tell you the same. And what will that make us? Two helpless, empty-handed sods. My hands aren't empty. I've got two swords. Why they call me Jimmy Two Swords. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna trying to get through the dialogue options. I will find your daughter. I'm here to play the game. What do you mean vanished? Precisely that. I awoke one morning to find them gone. I'll need 
to know a lot more than that. Can I see their rooms? What for? I need clues. Anything to latch on to. Got, I've got cat eyes, dude. Just give me a scent. A stranger <laughs> pour through their belongings. Want me to find them or not? Let me snoop. Let me snoop. Then let me work. Snoop. Yeah, th this investigate... Like, I would say this would probably be a good stopping point. Because this investigation at the, the castle takes a bit. All right. So from here, we shall save the game. I cannot save my game right now. <laughs> Kapow. Save the game, the Bloody Baron. All right. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's where we will call it for this evening's uh, uh, journey through fantasy Poland. We managed to find a uh, uh, we managed to find sad uh, family missing Santa, uh, kill a couple of hags, uh, get in trouble with the local guard, and uh, uh, play a Siri for the first time. So next time, the frog hunt is off uh, until level thirty. <laughs> So that'll that'll be a while. Uh, I didn't realize that that was the DLC content. Uh, but the next time, next Monday, we will uh, dive into uh, snooping through some uh, some folks' personal belongings, uh, rifling through drawers, and then finding uh, a non siri shaped daughter on our quest to find the siri shaped daughter. So, uh, yeah, as always... Uh, Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for coming on the call. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love for you to do this with me every week just because it keeps me, it allows me to focus on uh, not dying to the wolves. Uh, and uh, uh, the advice is always helpful because I, I still don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And if I'm only getting a couple of hours, uh, a, a couple of hours of play a week, uh, I, I won't know what I'm doing for a while. <laughs> But uh, as always, uh, uh, please feed the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video if you uh, if you are amused by uh, uh, by our banter. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Tell me what other games I should play because I've been out of this for uh, for a while and can use your recommendations. Uh, like we said earlier, uh, Tom recommended uh, Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice, and that was a fantastic title. Uh, as those game recommendations are given, I will add them to my Steam wish list and buy them when they get on sale because I don't have any of the imaginary money. And uh, yeah, if you're, uh, I'll be doing like later random streams throughout this week is one of my goals. Maybe stream some Overwatch or even just uh, dick around on WoW. And uh, if you're feeling lonely, come join. That's uh, that's really why I wanted to start doing this is uh it's still gonna be a while before we get the whole pandemic thing under control and a lot of people are a lot of people are suffering from the long-term isolation and you don't have to there are people out here we have the technolo technological infrastructure to reach out across the world and hang out and uh have fun conversations and and play fun games and I think that's more important now than ever. So come hang out. But uh, I am going to go figure out what I'm going to do for food. So any last any uh, last words, uh, Tom? Any last thoughts? Uh, nothing for me. It was fun to be here, and I hope to be here next week. Yeah. Well, we will see you guys then. And uh, my last thought, uh, get vaccinated. Fuck political dynasties. <laughs>